is too cheerful a greeting for the material that I'm about to cover. This is a review and comparison of both the book, The House of Mirth by Edith Wharton, and the 2000 movie of the same name. I'm gonna come out and say right now that I didn't really want to do this because I saw the movie when I was 11 or 12, and at the time I thought it was the most depressing movie I had ever seen. And so I wasn't looking forward to revisiting that. I didn't want to read the book. I didn't want to watch the movie again. But my sister is a big fan of it, both the book and the movie, I think. And she asked me if I would consider it, if I would do a video on it, since I did videos on a couple other period dramas. So she's my sister, and she knows where I live. So I guess I have to do it. The House of Mirth is a turn-of-the-century social tragedy focusing on Miss Lily Bart, a beautiful, high-class woman who unfortunately lacks the wealth needed to maintain the expensive lifestyle she was raised to prefer. Her only option to secure financial happiness, because it's 1905, is to marry someone rich. But as Lily's plans fall apart again and again, she starts a hopeless descent down the ladder of society. As you can probably guess, there is no mirth in the House of Mirth, and it's a good thing I knew that going into it, because I probably would have wanted to jump off the roof. But I still found it pretty depressing and frustrating. I tried to be optimistic going into it, because the only other Edith Wharton I had read was Ethan Frome. The first time I read Ethan Frome was for school, and I hated it, because it was just so awful and miserable and depressing. But then a friend urged me to try it again with a slightly different perspective, and I actually ended up liking it. I have learned over the last 10 years or so that depressing doesn't mean bad. There are some very good depressing books out there. So I tried to keep that in mind as I went into this, and for the first few chapters I did enjoy it. Because I had a general idea of how the story would end up, I could appreciate how Wharton packed in foreshadowing and foils and all that, but I quickly started losing patience with the story and, more specifically, with the characters. Edith Wharton's M.O. seems to be social critique of rich people, or not in the case of Ethan Frome, who are stuck in unhappy relationships and Everything gets messed up as they try to get out of those unhappy relationships, and they all either end up miserable or dead. Ugh. So, this turned out to be one of those stories where I pretty much hate most of the characters. Mainly because they're all playing this elaborate social game. The women are all like the mean girls of 1905, and it's all about saying what you don't mean, or not saying what you do mean, and it's all artifice and show and ugh, that kind of thing just drives me crazy. Our protagonist, Lily, is also playing the game, but what saves her from being unlikable is her occasional consciousness of the game itself. As her situation goes downhill, she slowly grows in self-awareness and self-knowledge, which is good, and I did end up feeling sorry for her because, as Wharton repeatedly points out, these problems are not really her fault. She was raised to think that rich living was a necessity. But I still got pretty impatient with her sometimes because she makes some really bad decisions. Lily is smart and talented in her social sphere. She just has a horrible way of managing money, but also a horrible way of managing certain situations because there are some things that it's like, you never should have gotten into this situation in the first place. Were you naive? Were you forgetful? Did you not think this through? She does manage to extricate herself from these situations, but it's too little, too late, and she's always one step down from where she was before. What's crazy is that with all this frustration, I end up wanting her to do things that I don't really think would be the right thing to do. I end up being like, just marry the guy who has the money and wants you to marry him, even if you don't love him and you might be bored or miserable or whatever, but you should just marry him anyway. I don't really think that that's the right thing to do, but it would be better than what does happen. 
So clearly this book left me a little testy, and I didn't really enjoy it much. As I was reading it, there were a couple other books that popped into my head because of similar content, and I compared The House of Mirth to them. The first one was Tender is the Night by F. Scott Fitzgerald, which also has rich people running around the Mediterranean, social climbers, unstable people, unstable marriages, and a miserable ending. You can see the similarities. I had a hard time writing this because the story drove me crazy, but I loved the writing. Some of the sentences that Fitzgerald crafted were just so delicious. Even though the story brought me down, the writing was so good that it negated all that. I did not have a similar experience with The House of Mirth. Not that Edith Wharton is a bad writer, she's a good writer, and there were some passages that I enjoyed that I thought, hmm, that was put very well. But it wasn't, it wasn't transcendentally awesome, and it didn't make up for the misery that I had to go through in the story. And the second book that I thought of was The Rise of Silas Lapham by William Dean Howells. This is also a turn-of-the-century book about the upper class versus the nouveau riche, social climbers, financial downfalls, you know. Unlike with Fitzgerald, I don't recall being carried away by William Dean Howells' writing, but because he's a realist, it's nice and basic and very readable. And while the story is about social disgrace, there is a positive moral outcome, which makes all that distress worth it for me. And again, I didn't have that with The House of Mirth, so I don't know, there wasn't anything to tip the scales for me. But let's move on to the movie because I've already been going at this for oh about an hour. The movie version that I'm referring to came out in the year 2000, was directed by Terrence Davies, and starred Gillian Anderson as Miss Lily Bart. Like I said, I had seen this before as a kid, but it's been long enough that although there were major things that I remembered pretty well, there were some other things that I didn't remember at all. The first 10-15 minutes or so felt odd. The acting seemed affected or slightly off, and I was trying to figure out why when it suddenly occurred to me, it's the game. That social game that bothered me so much in the book, we are seeing played out on the screen, and we are meeting our main characters mid-artifice. And so no wonder something feels fake to me. It started to feel more authentic once Lily let that social mask slip a little and she acted more like her real self. That was very interesting. As an adaptation of the book, I think it follows the story pretty closely. There are only a few minor deviations. That faithfulness extends beyond the script to the actual portrayals of the characters. Laura Linney as Bertha Dorset and Dan Aykroyd as Gus Trenner stood out for me as the nasty people. But as the star, Gillian Anderson managed to make Lily Bart more likable, more sympathetic than I found her in the book. That part calls for a huge range of emotion, and especially in the second half, the character is so distraught, so desperate and pathetic, and just caught in this awful trap. And I think Gillian Anderson really did an excellent job of bringing that home. Of course, I still thought that the story was frustrating and depressing and annoying, but you only had to deal with it for 2 hours and 15 minutes, which is much shorter compared to the amount of time it took me to get through the book, which is not an especially long book, but I just kept having to set it aside because I was just so bleh, fed up with it. It's generally kind of a slow drama, and there are some slow-moving transitions that I felt were a little too slow, uh, and yet there were some other transitions that seemed a bit quick, and I wish that they had shaved a minute or two off of the slow transitions, and just to add a line or two of dialogue to make the other transitions more clear, just to say, you know, who this character is, or who these people are, and what the deal is with them. Uh, especially with regard to the situation with Mrs. Hatch, I felt like 
that there wasn't enough explanation for what was going on there. Just a line or two would have helped. It's a very sumptuous depiction of the styles of 1905. The clothes, the hair, the hats, the furnishings. There were a few things that they changed. One was a good change. They took out the rampant anti-Semitism surrounding the character of Simon Rosedale in the book. I like Rosedale, and I especially liked him in the movie. I think his character was improved on, and he had a gentle, kind air that really appealed to me, and I think I actually liked him more than Lawrence Selden, the guy that I was probably supposed to like. Another thing that they did that I did not like so much is that they melded two characters together. That of Lily's cousin Grace and Selden's cousin Gertie Farish. They took a couple things about Gertie Farish and used them to make cousin Grace kind of an evil witch. And I can understand that, but the thing is, I liked Gertie Farish. I'm not sure I was supposed to like her. It didn't seem like Edith Wharton liked her. I'm not sure that Edith Wharton liked any of the characters. But there was a certain turning point when you suddenly learn something about Gertie Farish when I just suddenly was like, I like this character. This character is genuine and nobody really cares anything about her, but she's stuck. She's got unrequited love and I'm a sucker for that and yet she bends over backwards to sacrifice herself for her friend who doesn't appreciate her and I don't know there's just so many pathetic things going on with her that I really felt for her and she felt more genuine than all of the other characters but she didn't make the final cut so that's one thing I was kind of disappointed about and um, a final word about the ending. Remember I said that the book had a shade of ambiguity in the ending? The movie also has that ambiguity and kind of increases it a little, but it's really up to interpretation and I'm not gonna go into it too much because it is the ending, but I will just say that I think that what happens is accidental. So, for my sister, and for anyone else who is interested, that's my review of The House of Mirth, the book, and The House of Mirth, the movie, and how they compare. I don't know how popular The House of Mirth is nowadays, but if you are familiar with the book or the movie and you have thoughts you'd like to share, I invite you to share them. I just ask that you would please be mindful of spoilers. Thank you for watching! Bye!